everyone, welcome back to part two of cutting the cable cord. Uh, so today we are going to talk about streaming services. So uh, in part one we had just a kind of brief introduction to the whole idea of cutting the cord and some of your options that are available and in this part we're going to talk about specific streaming services. So how does streaming work? Uh, that's a question that a lot of people who haven't used it before um, ask right off the bat. Um, it's, it can be kind of scary if you've never done anything with it before. Uh, basically, it's access through an internet connection instead of a cable cord. That's how streaming comes into your home is through your internet. And just to kind of sum up what most streaming services offer um, or, or some of the issues that you might run into them into with them. Um, so many of them do include commercials or ads as they call them and often you can pay a little bit extra to avoid this uh, but sometimes you can't. And then there are ones like Netflix that don't have ads and um, they don't really have any plan of ever adding them in. With a lot of streaming services, you pay per month and there's no contract, and many do offer free trials. So the no contract is a big perk for a lot of people who their only experience has been with cable or satellite. Um, oftentimes you get locked into these one or two year contracts, and um, if it's just not working out for you, you're kind of stuck or you have to pay a penalty to get out of them. With streaming services, um, it's month to month. So if you're not happy after a month of trying it out, you can cancel. No, it's no issue. You can pick it back up whenever you want. So it's a lot more flexible. For a lot of these services, the cost will depend on the number of screens or devices that you'll use at one time. So screens or devices are things like TVs, tablets, uh, computer screens, your phone screen. It's really anything you're going to be watching on. Uh, so if you do have a large family, you might want to pay a little bit more to have perhaps four screens at once that you could watch. Um, I think some of these even have options that go up to six screens at once. Uh, so basically that means um, six different uh, people in your house could be watching six different things at the same time. And a lot of times these uh, services offer content that you really can't watch anywhere else except on their service. So for example, Netflix um, is well known for this. They have a lot of things that people would love to be able to watch on DVD or, or somewhere else, um, and it's just not an option. They don't put out a lot of their stuff on DVD or make it available any other way than subscribing to Netflix. Um, so for one example, right now, the, docu the docu-series uh, The Tiger King is very popular on Netflix. Um, you would have to pay for Netflix to watch that. So with these streaming services, there are two main types of them. The first one is on-demand streaming, which is really uh, what started uh, the cable cord cutting movement. Uh, this is what Netflix is. So it's basically a catalog of movies or previously shown or aired TV shows and original content. And you go on and you choose which one you want to watch and you kind of click on it and it just starts playing for you. And you can pause it or stop it or switch to something else anytime that you want. And the second main type that has really grown in the last few years is live TV streaming. So this is for things like sports and um, award shows, election coverage, big things like that that you want to watch as they're happening. So the Super Bowl or, or um, you know, baseball playoffs, things like that. Uh, and this was really the thing that stopped a lot of people from cutting the cable cord early on was they were worried about losing, um, especially sports was a really big thing. But now there are tons of options out there for this. So I like to talk about um, Netflix because it was such a big uh, catalyst for the cable cord cutting movement. It was a lot of people's 
first introduction to uh, cutting the cable cord. Uh, so in 2017, there was a study that showed that 54% of homes in the U.S. had Netflix at that point. Um, I've tried to look for newer studies because um, I think that number maybe has gone up. Uh, but the closest thing I found was as of 2020, 15% uh, of all internet traffic in the world at one time is Netflix. So right now, 15% uh, of, of what people are using the internet for is Netflix, which is a pretty large number. So Netflix offers um, popular movies and TV shows and a lot of original programming, which makes people really love it. The one caveat about Netflix that a lot of people don't realize at first is that the TV shows on there are usually a season behind. So for example, uh, something like Grey's Anatomy that's been on for 16 seasons, um, you're not going to find you know, last night's episode that was on TV of Grey's Anatomy on Netflix. It's, it's going to be about a season behind. So they're right now, I believe, in uh, season 16. And you could watch seasons 1 through 15 on Netflix if you were so inclined. Um, but anything that's been in the current season won't be on there. Uh, however, there are other options for this, like Hulu, which we'll talk about next, um, which is why a lot of people often have multiple subscriptions. They don't just have one to Netflix um, because different services offer different opportunities. And the pricing on Netflix, just to give you an idea of what you'd be dealing with, uh, starts at $9. So that's for the very basic um, plan. And the most expensive plan is $16. So really that's not that that high for, um, you know, I think that expensive plan contains four streams at once. So four different people in your home could be watching four different things at once. So Hulu is um, another huge option. Um, they also offer movies. Uh, the nice thing about Hulu is that they offer major network TV shows, um, usually about 24 hours after they air. So uh, again, let's say you want to watch that episode of Grey's Anatomy that was on last night. Uh, 24 hours after it airs on TV, you can go ahead and watch it on Hulu. So it's good for people that really want to stay up to date on their TV shows. Um, you know, a lot of the big TV shows you don't want to end up getting uh, spoiled or, or um, you know, have surprises ruined. So this is a good way to keep up to date with those. So the pricing on Hulu starts at $6, and that is with ads. And you can pay $12 to get it without ads. So that's really going to be up to you on what you prefer. And Hulu does offer live TV streaming as well. So these plans start at $55 with ads, and they go up to $61 with no ads. So this is a huge price jump, and a lot of people in the class um, are often surprised by this at this point. However, as we go forward, you will see for live TV streaming, uh, this around $50 price point is the average. Um, so it seems like a lot, but you get a lot for that, and it still is usually cheaper than what you'd be paying for cable. So don't let that price point scare you off. I do like to mention Amazon Prime, just because a lot of people do already pay for Prime, um, which is... Uh, you know that it offers free shipping and free ebooks and things like that. Um, so with your Prime package, you also get what they call Prime Video, which is access to watching a lot of their content for free. So the cost just to be a Prime member is $119 a year. Um, and when you go to their uh, library their, their, on their app and you start looking through the videos, you want to look for that Prime symbol on the videos. And that means that if you are a Prime member, you can go ahead and watch those for free. So they have a lot of content out there. Um, and if you are, already are a Prime member, it's definitely worth looking into. So Sling TV is a really big one for live TV. Uh, so they were one of the first ones to come out to offer this to people, and they have just continually improved their services as the years have gone on. Uh, their plans start at $25 a month for, uh, they have either what they call an orange or a blue plan, and then $40 a month for the two combined. 
Uh, so this is cheaper than, you know, the Hulu Live, um, but they do offer, I believe it's, it's less channels then. So you really are getting exactly what you're paying for here. And with Sling, you can often add on extra channels um, for things that interest you for extra money. So they have a sports package that you can add on for $5, or they have a news package that you can add on for $5. And they usually offer... Um, a cloud DVR as well for five dollars a month so if you so since this is live TV um, you would have to be sitting down at the right time to be watching something uh, but if you add this cloud DVR you can go ahead and record stuff on their uh, system and then play it whenever you want so that's a pretty good deal for five dollars a month and I'd like to go over some other uh, streaming options that are out there that are a little um, either newer or less known than those those big three ones that we just talked about. So Disney Plus is a new one uh, that started in November of last year and has made a lot of waves um, in the streaming world. So Disney went ahead and pulled all of their content off of things like Netflix and Hulu and moved it to this Disney Plus platform which is $7 a month or $70 a year. Uh, so for people that don't really know what Disney Plus or, or what Disney is all involved with, um, it is all the Disney movies, all the Marvel movies, Star Wars, including new TV shows that they're creating for that, um, National Geographic, and they are creating new content just for this platform. So it really is a lot of, of stuff for uh you know, pretty cheap at $7 a month. And they um, also release, you know, new movies on there that maybe just came out on DVD. Um, so it's a nice alternative to having to purchase separate DVDs. And Apple TV Plus is a newer streaming service as well uh, that started last year in November. That's only $5 a month. Uh, it currently has quite a small catalog of shows and movies um, that they are adding to each month. So while it is small, um, a lot of it is sort of high demand um, programming that people would want to watch. So it's stuff like um, TV shows with Reese Witherspoon and Chris Evans or Oprah has a show on there. So it's stuff that, that um, the average, you know, watcher does want to see. Um, so $5 a month might not be bad. To, and again, you can sign up for one month and watch what you want and then cancel and go back whenever you feel the need to. Uh, another big one that's come out recently is Philo or Philo TV. I'm not quite sure on how to pronounce that. That is at $20 a month, which is very cheap for live TV. That's the cheapest that there is out there. Uh, the reason that they get to be so cheap is it doesn't include any news or sports or local programs. Um, so it, this is just those really popular cable channels like HGTV and Hallmark and TV Land and things like that. So a lot of people, they love HGTV, and that's something that they just have on um, in their home, in the background, all weekend long. And this would be a really good option for that. It's very cheap, and it might offer the content that you're looking for if, again, something like sports or news coverage isn't a huge uh, priority for you. And then YouTube TV is a relatively new one as well, um, jumping back up to that $50 price point per month. Uh, this is live TV. The nice thing about it is it does include almost all of the major channels, as which include sports and news. Um, and it has an unlimited DVR storage that is included in its price. So where with Sling TV you paid $5 a month for that access to a DVR, YouTube TV is um, free with, with your cost. Um, YouTube TV has gotten great reviews so far and it currently is actually rated as the top recommendation if you want live TV. Um, so they base this on things like the ease of use, um, the cost that you're paying per how many channels you're getting, and um, the quality of the streaming that you will get onto your TV. So here are just a few other options that are out there that I like to share with people that they can look into if it sounds like something that they'd be interested in. Uh, so Sony Crackle is a free app that's out there. It's been around for a really long time. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out and maybe see some free movies and TV that are of interest to you. 
Uh, Fubo TV is at $50 a month, and that focuses on sports, um, but they're also starting to add other channels as well. And HBO Now is at $15 a month, and this was really created as a response to the popularity of Game of Thrones. So before Game of Thrones, HBO um, did not want anything to do with the streaming world. Um, they believed that to have access to HBO, you needed to have cable or, to, or satellite service. Uh, but so many people were illegally downloading and watching Game of Thrones that they decided to offer this app, um, so this service, for $15 a month uh, to give access to their shows uh, for people who didn't want a full cable package. Uh, the HBO is going to be rolling out a new thing called HBO Max later this year, and uh, this could be a big game changer when they do that. Uh, they did pull um, in the show Friends for this, and so that um, there's been talk of a big Friends reunion that's going to happen. That's going to be on HBO Max, and so that's going to help them launch that out to the world. So keep an eye out for that. And then CBS All Access is $6 a month. So CBS is one network that has never really quite played well with um, things like Hulu. They decided to create their own app and, uh, and charge for it and have their content on there, um, including shows that they don't air on regular CBS. Uh, so for people who really love CBS content, uh, that $6 a month is, is well worth it to them. So I wanted to include some information, uh, and this is a new slide that I've never had to include before in this class, um, but a lot of these services uh, are offering free content uh, due to the COVID-19 crisis that's happening right now. Um, so you can go ahead and look through this list if any of these interest you. It's something looking, in, looking at. Um, there are, I'm sure, several other free things out there um, that you could look for. Uh, so, you know, HBO right now is offering a lot of free content through their apps. Um, Sling TV, if you're looking to try them out, you can get a 14 days free with them um, to try out their, their blue package. Um, and then Acorn TV is a British app. So there's a lot of British TV shows on there. So you can try that free right now for 30 days. And then Shudder is an app for um, horror movies, for horror movie fans. So if you're interested in that, you can try that out for 30 days. And like I said, I'm sure there's lots of other um, free options out there as well that you could try out at this time. So that's going to wrap up part two of of this discussion about cutting the cable cord. So in part three, we will talk about... Um, so let's say you you know okay I want Netflix and Hulu now how do I get this on my TV uh, and so we're going to cover all of that and also I'll share with you some resources that you can use going forward um, when you decide to cut the cable cord so if you have any questions about this part about some of these services or how they work uh, go ahead and drop the comments into Facebook and I will do my best to answer them all right thank you guys